Chill. Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior, the Earth's mightiest action figure video podcast. So take off your pants, crack a beer, and let's talk toys. Let's talk about giant-sized X-Men number one. This is an As Told by Toys episode that I've been meaning to do for a very long time because we've almost, almost got the entire giant size team together, but not entirely. So I'm gonna talk you through the story. I'm gonna tell you who we have got, where you can get them from, who's missing, and who I'm most looking forward to seeing. So the version of this comic I'm gonna be going through is actually quite a fun one. It is a tribute to Ween and Cockrum, which has been a collaborative effort by all these different artists who have done a page each, and they've all done it in their own style, but copying the pages and panels of the original. I really kind of dig that. So guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride as I take you through Giant Sized X-Men number one. So the cover, now you've seen this a million times before and a billion different versions and riffs and iterations on it. It's one of those most iconic comic book covers and for good reason. I do love the great sort of out with the old, in with the new, very, very upfront storytelling of this is what we are doing. Forget about the old team, which kind of had been a little bit forgotten about. The X-Men were no kind of franchise juggernaut at this point. They had kind of been shuffled to the back of the Marvel Universe, so this was their return to prominence with our whole new team. They kicked it off pretty darn well. So of course we've got most of the characters I'm going to talk about right here, but let's do it one by one as they appear in the story, because it's a lot of fun. Second Genesis. What a what a great mission statement to open things up with. Second Genesis. That's kind of laying it all out in front there. It's like, guys, we gonna do this right now. And they really did, because honestly, since this issue, the X-Men have never looked back. So it's time to meet the new X-Men, and we open in Germany. And already, I love what an international feeling this story is going to have. We're going to be hopping all over the world, and that's what I love about the X-Men, where it's like, it's like the World Cup of superheroes, all these different representatives. So we start in Germany, not just Germany, but Marvel's version of Germany at this time, which is basically still torches and pitchforks. And I always found that kind of funny, which even like in the 70s, 80s, I think it sort of stopped around the 90s. <laughs> Marvel seemed to have this image of Europe is Frankenstein's monster, pitchforks and torches, and England is Mary Poppins. I remember reading a Spider-Man story where Spidey goes to England and fights Night and Fog. Two, two completely forgotten villains. More on those in a different episode, maybe. But totally, England is like, all right, Spider-Man, Jim Jim Jeru, apples and pears, all right. <laughs> it's like, my fair lady. I'm like, have any of you guys ever actually been to England? Let's move on from that. We get Germany, and the amazing Nightcrawler is being pursued by a, a bunch of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein-type yokels who, of course, want to kill the beast. And it's kind of funny that his power is teleportation, but he's like, oh, I had best run away from these people as quickly as I can do, unless there was some other way of moving from place to place quickly. If only I knew what that was. So he's about to get cornered and trampled by all of these yokels, basically, when thankfully a psychic voice cuts through the crowd. But before we get to the man who's going to round up this team, let's just take a little look at Nightcrawler himself, because this... This is what I would call an A-tier figure. This, this is a beautiful Marvel legend from the Juggernaut wave, I think. Stop me if I'm wrong. Maybe it's Apocalypse. Regardless. Three heads, baby. He's got three heads and a sword and a different hand. Man, Hasbro absolutely killed it. I think this Nightcrawler figure came out at what I would consider to be the peak of Marvel Legends, where they had just got back into really doing the X-Men team again, and just, they were giving us banger after banger after banger, and Nightcrawler still stands out as one of the best in very high demand right now, because they haven't re-released him yet. I'm sure they will do at some point. It's, it's, it's inevitable. But in the meantime, if you don't have this Nightcrawler yet, you know, best of luck finding him, because he's going for a pretty penny now, and rightly so, because that figure, ooh, gorgeous. 
So Xavier tells the masses to go about their business and he comes up to Nightcrawler and he's like, ah, I'm putting together a team of special individuals and someone like yourself, you, know, you do not have to be a freak. You are not a freak. You're a good person. Look at you, besides the pointy teeth and the tail and the brimstone and not teleporting when you could just teleport. By the way, you can't teleport, you know. That's not what he said, but I'm implying it. But basically he says, come with me, I've got a plan. And Nightcrawler, instantly, that's all he needs to hear. He's like, ha you son of a bitch, I'm in. And of course that takes us to Professor Xavier. So let's look at what figure options we have. Now this is pre Shi'ar floaty chair. I was going to say wheelchair, but by nature of it floating, it stops being a wheelchair. Is that right? So we have that floaty chair Xavier, who is the only real kind of good modern comic book Xavier that we have. But of course the chair don't match. If the chair don't match, you can't attach. That's what I always say, literally, every day. You'd be surprised how often that comes up. But you can always get the MCU Fox 20th Anniversary Professor Xavier. That chair is what you're looking for. You could plonk your modern one in there. Boom! You got yourself a new Professor Xavier. And of course, the MCU Xavier, like, that's actually a nice figure too. But I want to keep my consistency with my comic book characters. So you do a little mashup, boom, sorted. All right, next location. Now we go over to Canada, and who possibly could be in Canada that we need to recruit? Of course, it's everyone's favorite alphabetized super soldier, Weapon X, or Wolverine to his friends, or James to people in about 35 years time when we get the backstory. So Professor X, basically, the cojones on this guy, just rocks up into the Canadian special military secret service, and he's like, Ah, uh, yes, your best operative. Ah, uh, mine now, please. He doesn't even use his psychic powers. And Wolverine, is, what a what a loyal, what a loyal, proud Canadian he is. He's like, what's that? You mean I can just go work for you instead of dealing with these guys? <laughs> okay, that's, that's literally it. Although I think his logic is a bit spurious, where he's like, ah, there's too much red tape and government bureaucracy here. I'm going to work for this guy who's going to tell me what to do, where to go, and how to do it. This seems like the same deal. But hey, let's move this plot forward. And of course, the government of Canada are like, Hey, buddy, you can't just go leaving here like this. We've got ourselves a military to take care of. What's up with that guy? And Wolverine whoosh, cuts his tie off. And that in Canadian is an official symbol of resignation. Ask your Canadian friends. It's true. That's just, you know, as is tradition. So ultimately, all Xavier had to do was say, hey, come with me, I'll give you a better deal. And Wolverine is like, ha ha, you son of a bitch, I'm in. And let's take a look at the Wolverine we can use for this. Instant one to go to is the Apocalypse Wolverine. And I don't think we've had a perfect giant size X-Men style Wolverine quite yet. There's only a couple of little nuances that are different. The, the shape of the mask, uh, some of the, the shades of the blue maybe, but Apocalypse Wolverine is I think as close as you're gonna get. Or of course you could go for the three pack Wolverine who's very very similar. Again, only some minor changes. He might be better actually because it's more of a matte finish as opposed to a chromey metallic blue. So that could be the best one to go for. Of course you've got a bajillion other Wolverines but they're all kind of versions of a theme. I think those two, Apocalypse and Love Triangle, those are the closest ones. And now we go over to Ireland for two panels. This is real quick. Xavier's just like, hey, Banshee, want to come do a thing? And Banshee's like, ah, Bagora. All right, then, you son of a bitch. Oi, men. And that's literally it. Now, this is where we hit possibly the only snag in building this team is Banshee. Hasbro. Where is he? Exactly, we've been asking for this guy for the longest time. We've finally got Siren, but no Banshee. So that's the biggest omission that we're currently still waiting for. Come on, Hasbro! Give us a Banshee. But there's no time to lament over Banshee because now we're going over to Kenya, where we meet for the first time Aurora Monroe, the goddess Storm. And Whoa, hey, that lady's all kinds of naked. But she is being worshipped as a goddess, essentially. People are coming to her and they're like, Yo, Storm, my crops, they're the worst. Okay, could, could you help us out? And she's like, hey, pff, no worries. Here you go. A little bit of rain for you there. How do you like me now? Worship me, bitches. That's what I'm saying. That's pretty much how it goes. So, of course, Xavier comes over and he's like, Aurora Monroe, I can see that you are worshipped as a goddess and a queen in your land. 
want to come with me and just mess some stuff up? And she actually says, I do quite like that she says, Oh, Professor, I can... I, I don't think she calls him Professor. It's like, strange bald man, I can sense a deep sincerity in your words, and I wish to do more good in the world. So, you son of a bitch, I'm in. For God's sake, put some clothes on. And now we have Aurora Monroe Storm, and we have the perfect figure for her as well. God bless you, Hasbro. You gave us the two-pack, so I'm going to get to the next part of that pretty soon. But we have... First appearance storm. Not in her all kinds of naked kind of first appearance storm. <laughs> they ain't going to be selling that in Toys R Us. Well, they ain't going to be selling much in Toys R Us right now. But you know what I'm saying. We get the proper black costume badass looking storm. I think this is a really cool design for her that, you know, she keeps going back to occasionally in the comics because folks are just like, yeah, it's a wicked looking storm. My go-to, of course, will always be the animated series white costume, but this is what she first appeared in, and I think it sort of harkens to her queen goddess kind of origin really, really nicely. So, of course, yep, this is a two-pack, as you can see. I ain't got it, nothing up my sleeves. Never got hold of this one. I just need the 90s team. But... This one that they did, I think a lot of people put her as their figure of the year, or at least in contention for figure of the year back in the day that it came out. 2020, maybe, I want to say. So yeah, very, very pretty. Perfect Storm. <laughs> Perfect Storm. Uh, it's a film. So then it's off to Japan, where we meet Sunfire, who instantly establishes himself as a bit of a surly dick. To be honest, he's there sipping his tea and he's like, ah, oh, well, Professor, I, I will do this not for you, but maybe I gotta do a little something for myself, you know? He, he's not a benevolent person. You can instantly see Sunfire is being positioned as, oh, that guy on the team. Which is funny, because I often think that Wolverine is supposed to be that guy on the team. But no, <laughs> you got someone to kind of, you know, out-grumpify Wolverine. So that's an interesting little angle to take. But Sunfire, he's actually a pretty wicked character. So even though Professor X is offering an altruistic kind of reason, he's just like, well, I'm not too interested in that, but maybe I should do this for myself. Therefore, you son of a bitch, I'm in. And I am all in on the Sunfire figure, which I used to own when I was collecting everything and then money and space and life got in the way but this figure was super super duper pretty because it's kind of silly his costume is a bit a, a bit power rangery a bit a bit goofy the, the big lucha libre that's why i like it it's that Lu lucha libre pro resu type mask that i i really dig so i think for a figure it just works it works really really nicely because it pops off the shelf. Great. So if you can get yourself a Sunfire, then I say go for it because he's got the nice flame effects as well, which again, like we're, we're still reusing on every other figure to this day. Blue Marvel just came out with the same power effects, but they, they do look good. They look really, really great. So yeah, that version of Sunfire, man, I'm starting to wish I hadn't sold all of these because putting them together as a team, as that first X-Men team, yeah, that would look really good on the shelf now. Dang it! Never sell your action figures, kids. Never. And then we go over to Soviet Russia, where we find everybody's favorite colossal mutant, Peter Rasputin. And we also discover that in Soviet Russia, farming equipment farms you. Yes, he's out there and he's doing all of his farming type stuff in his normal human form, when lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, his little sister is sat there in the middle of the field with a tractor hurtling towards her. I don't know how that works with mechanics and stuff. I'm pretty sure there needs to be someone in there putting their foot down on the on the accelerator for that to happen. But you know what? I'll allow it. Russian farming technology, am I right? And of course, we get one of those classic Superman type saves where Colossus just runs in front. Goodoosh! Metal all over. The tractor smashes against him and he saves the day. And to be honest, if I was one of the farmers, I'd be like... Ooh, we, that is our only tractor. Now we starve this year. But at least they're going to have a benefactor in the form of Professor X, who's like, Peter Rasputin, you can turn into metal. That's pretty freaking awesome. Do you want to come to America? And why am I sounding like Dr. Evil now? I, my Professor Xavier is, is, is very, very close to Dr. Evil, gentlemen. Come to America with me. I will pay you one American dollar. 
But what actually is quite sweet is that he does have a nice moment with his parents, where you've got this big lug of a character who's a bit of a monster, but he's still like, Mum and Dad, what should I do? And they say, you know, follow your heart and, you know, do, do what you feel you must do. And he's like, ah, yeah, but I don't know if my conscience is going to do the same. Don't know where this accent's going either. <laughs> I'm not going to stop doing accents. But let's look at the Colossus figure. This guy, you know where he comes from. It comes from the Juggernaut 2-pack. A fan fantastic two-pack. Yes, it's repackaging a builder figure, which is going to be kind of annoying for people who have just got the Juggernaut builder figure and they're like, boy, can't wait to get my Colossus for the X-Men team. Wait, I have to buy the Juggernaut again? Come on! But hey, it is an awesome, awesome figure. This, I love this guy. And he comes with the fist hands and the grabby hands. And that was what stopped me from replacing him with the Select. Because in my X-Men collection, I want to have as many different lines and manufacturers kind of represented so that I can have like the ultimate version of each character. So there's Legends, Mafex, Mezco, Revelatech, all sorts of different ones. Revoltech, always mispronounce that. But I wanted to get a Select on there. But the only one who I thought was com comparable was Colossus. But I have my Colossus gripping onto the Sentinel, which looks so freaking badass. Which you can't do with the Select. He only has the fisted hands. Therefore, the Marvel Legends Colossus, he gets to stay in the display. And I'm so glad that he does because he looks wicked. The chrome sheen looks wonderful. The actual costume design is that old retro one. So again, fits right in, looks amazing with the giant size X-Men, who I've all sold. Dang it. So ultimately, Colossus is like, you son of a bitch, I'm in. And then finally, it's over to Arizona where we meet John Proudstar, Thunderbird, which I always thought was just a wicked name. Thunderbird. That just, just sounds awesome. And now I realize, well, that's because I, I, I grew up with the Thunderbirds in the UK. I've never actually drawn that connection that it's the same, <sighs> the same name. Dave, you, thank goodness you're beautiful. So <laughs> we've got Thunderbird, who shares the name with the Thunderbirds, which I just twigged. And he gets another introduction as this gruff, grumpy, solo, well, why should I go with you type of person. So we've got Wolverine, we've got Sunfire, and we've got Thunderbird, all of whom are kind of surly, gruff people. But nonetheless, Xavier does manage to talk him in. And amusingly, when initially his offer is rejected, he pretty much goes the Back to the Future route with the, you know, what's the matter, chicken? <laughs> Which is very, very kind of just like, ah, Thunderbird, <laughs> you're so basic. He, he doesn't use the chicken word, it, it's more like, ah, I guess it's true what they say about you, you Apaches. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> unless, unless what they said about the Apaches was, <laughs> you're very easy to manipulate. Because he's like, all right, you son of a bitch, I'm in. So then with the team assembled, we get a fantastic big splash page. Just like the, the comic is saying to itself, congratulations, we've assembled these badasses. Let's look at them in costume. And they do look awesome. Like this, this team is just, it's such a, an evolution, which is appropriate for X-Men. It's an evolution from the original five and how that expanded to like this new generation. Super cool, new and badass. It would have only been more modern if they'd called it X-Men 2000, which was actually the kiss of death for any pro wrestler in the 90s. If you get repackaged with 2000 after your name, it's like, ho oh, oh, ho, ah, this ain't gonna last long. But yeah, these guys look terrific. And Xavier does mention, ah, blah, 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 unstable molecules. That's why these costumes apparently fit so well but I do love the Marvel Universe all contained together Reed Richards gets a name check he's like ah, I got these unstable molecules from my friend Reed Richards hence they all fit perfectly which makes sense rather than having a seamstress come over and like <laughs> measure Wolverine's inseam it, 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 it's kind of like an extra step of thinking that you don't need to have so boom unstable molecules everyone looks fabulous and then I did speak too soon actually because there is one more X-Man to add to this team and that is Cyclops and Cyclops comes in and basically says, hey, yeah, you're all here because we went to this island and everyone probably died. So I want you guys to come with me as well now. We're going we're gonna to go do that again. The thing where everyone's disappeared, probably dead. Yeah, yeah, come with me. Let's, let's, let's do that again. Are we going to change our tactics? No, we're just going to do it again. We just, we just need more people. We just need, need more bodies. All the other ones are probably dead. So are you, are you coming? 
That's not exactly how he pitched it, but that's how I would have heard it. But yes, he said, we went out to investigate this island and we landed there. And basically, that's the last thing I remember. We landed on the island, everything went wrong, and suddenly I woke up on the plane on the way back. Don't know how that happened. So yeah, Cyclops basically says how they got what they thought was a mutant distress call from this planet and the original X-Men. So Cyclops, Jean Grey, Beast, Iceman, and... Cyclops... Oh, Angel! There you go! Those five, along with Havoc and Polaris, I think, they all go over there and yes, when they land, it all goes wrong. And as for the other X-Men to make up this team, we actually don't have very many of them in Marvel Legends form. We've got Cyclops! Okay, so, so that's sort of the closest we get, but <laughs> good luck getting him because he's only available in the Phoenix 2-pack. That's the closest example of that costume, but man, if, if you want to get that 2-pack, you better have a, a few savings like under your pillow because that thing is freaking expensive. And then the rest of these costumes, we don't really have besides Havoc. We have just got this new Havoc with the controller. Yes, no, Bonebreaker Wave. I don't have him yet, still waiting to get him in hand, but I'm really looking forward to it because even though it's a basic black design, I love the swirly-whirly power effects behind him. The mask is always super fun, so I can't wait to get my hands on that Havoc. Everyone else though, we're still waiting, has broken on. We got, we got our money. I, I did say that. Polaris, though. We've got an X-Factor Polaris who came with X-Factor Havoc in a two-pack. So that's another one we've got. But as for the other ones, we only have the modern versions of their costumes. So, of course, we have Archangel. We are so overdue a feather-winged angel. But no, we just got the Archangel version. Then Beast, of course. We've just got Furry Beast. We got the blue one. Or you got the gray variety as well. Iceman. We got a couple of different Icemen. We got the Retro one, who actually, he fits. He actually fits pretty well. There you go. So you could use Retro Iceman, or you could use the Juggernaut Wave Iceman. I love that one. It's more of a modern design with more details and spikes and shards on him, but that does look wicked. And then Jean Grey, of course, we do kind of actually have a Jean Grey that would work. You could always use the House of X Jean Grey. That's actually her classic costume. So yeah, after saying that, ah, psh, you can't make that team, it's impossible. You actually can make quite a few of them. So yeah, pick yourself up a House of X Jean Grey with the green dress and the silly pointy mask. And there you go. You've, you've got the lion's share of the original team there as well. Huh, this is a little extra bit of team building I didn't even know we could do. So guys, we've done the team building. I'm just going to tell you how this story wraps up because I don't want to linger over it for too long. You know, we've we got the meat and potatoes. They all arrive on Krakoa and they're like, hey, let's split up, which is the best thing to do always. <laughs> We're going to go split up to investigate that strange noise. And they find out that the, the, the island is kind of actually trying to fight against them, like organically with, with rocks and creatures. And it, it's almost like the island is alive. Oh, by the way, it's called Krakoa. Ah, <laughs> can you see where we're going with this? So eventually, after combating all of these different elements and splitting up into teams and everyone getting the personalities and powers over, it's good storytelling. It really is. It's all quite condensed in this 48-page issue. You get a good story and a whole bunch of character intros. It works really well. So they discover this cave where all the other X-Men are being held and they're all sort of like hooked up in vines and it, it, but it's a bit of body horror actually, because it looks like, like the island is kind of feeding off of them. So they pull everyone down. They're like, guys, don't worry. We got you. At which point, I do love this kind of horror twist cliche. They're like, no, why did you come back? The, no, we, Guys, the island is trying to trap us all. That's why it sent Cyclops back. It's actually kind of cool. Turns out the island itself is alive. The island is the mutant they were looking for. That's kind of cool. So yes, through radiation and all this kind of stuff, the actual island mutated into a mutant life form and it's feeding off mutant energy. So it hooked up all the other X-Men to its personal little organic IV drip that it's feeding on and it sent Cyclops back to bring more mutants, which is exactly what he did. Thanks, Scott. Jeez. I suppose that, you know, he could have warned them, but Scotty didn't know. So now they get to have this big fight. But how do you fight an island? Well, don't worry. The island, Krokoa, is actually very compromising. It's like, don't worry, guys. I'm going to give you a physical form to fight. And it forms this 
big, giant, hulking Krakoa monster, which is kind of cool. Would make a pretty badass builder figure. I mean, it would still be a bit smaller than it needs to be, but I would take it. And ultimately, they defeat Krakoa by doing like a little mutant combination. Ah, Storm, you go up and do that. Polaris, you do this. And it's f magnetizing and lightning and physics, basically. I think they use science to confuse the reader into going, okay, I guess that would work. And essentially, they blast Krakoa into space, which is, you know, one way of dealing with it. I guess it, it does find its way back eventually because they're all living happily on Krakoa now. So it turns out they managed to squash their beef. So that was kind of nice. But essentially at this point in time, Krakoa is blasted off into space and the X-Men are all on the Blackbird and they're like, hey, we got double the X-Men now. Let's figure out what we're gonna do about this back home at the X-Mansion. Home in time for tea. And folks, that does it for Giant Sized X-Men number one. As told by toys, that's how you build not only the Giant Sized X-Men team, but we kind of touched on the other team as well. So that was a little Brucey bonus for you. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This was a bit more of an abridged As Told by Toys, but I wanted to just get to the meat and potatoes of the action figures themselves. I hope you enjoyed this. If there are any other stories that you want to hear on As Told by Toys, comment below, let me know, give me some ideas, or you can go over to patreon.com, sign up there, and if you request that through Patreon, then that's one of the Patreon bonuses, is giving me a story to do from As Told by Toys. Wow! I think I managed to explain that in the most convoluted way possible. So guys, thanks very much for watching, and until next time, keep displaying model behavior.